In this video, I'm going to talk about how working memory and long-term memory interact to form chunks that you can use for problem solving. I'm going to close with two proven methods of study that take advantage of our understanding of chunking, spaced repetition and recall. Imagine this is a side view of your brain. It turns out that problem solving is done in the front part of your brain in a place called the prefrontal cortex. This is where neuroscientists think your working memory resides. And contrary to proper belief, you can keep more than a thought in your head. The good news is you can keep four thoughts in your head. That is, you can keep about four thoughts in your working memory. It's your working memory that you use for focused thinking. It's what you use when you try to sit down and concentrate and really try to come up with a solution. Imagine that you're trying to solve a problem, and the problem really just involves four basic ideas or elements. Use your working memory to manipulate these ideas and think about them and try them out in different combinations until ultimately you come up with a solution to your problem. I said the good news was that you can hold four different thoughts in your brain. The bad news is that you can only hold about four different thoughts in your brain. What if you get a problem that involves more than four basic elements? You can only hold four thoughts in your working memory. It seems like you could never put all the pieces together. Have you ever had a problem that seemed impossible and it was really frustrating? Well, it might be that at that time, the problem really was impossible. It might have had more elements in it that you could put together in your brain. This is why a lot of times you can't expect to instantly be able to solve more complicated problems. What you have to do is you have to group related elements into a chunk of information. And this process just takes time. But if you successfully assemble various elements of the problem into useful chunks, now notice you have only four pieces to work with. Since there are only four chunks, you can now use your working memory to manipulate all the various parts, just like before, and you can solve an even more complicated problem. The reason why it takes time to form these chunks is because you have to understand what pieces logically fit together. Here's an example from physics. Let's say in a physics class you're learning about momentum. Now, momentum is just mass times velocity. So if an object has mass and it's moving, it's got momentum. So let's say that this big triangle represents the idea of momentum. So momentum is just mass times velocity, and all by itself, it's nearly meaningless. Things with mass and velocity, they have momentum. But let's say this smaller triangle is the concept of force. And the concept of force is that the only way the momentum of an object can change is if a force acts on that object. So when you put those ideas together, now you have a chunk that might give you some insight into solving a physics problem. For instance, if you have an, a moving object and you know from the problem that no force is acting on it, you immediately know, oh, the momentum of that object's not going to change. Notice, not only did you have to realize that those two concepts went together, but you also had to practice using that to realize that, oh, no force acts. What that means, I can use the idea that the momentum's not going to change. When you're learning a new subject, you have to figure out which concepts go together, and then you have to practice with the concepts to know when to use them. Not only that, the chunk has to be firmly stuck together so that when you go to manipulate it, it won't fall apart. What this means is the whole chunk, as an interconnected piece of information, has to be put into your long-term memory. Your long-term memory can hold way more than four ideas in it. In fact, that's where most of the things, the knowledge that you have, everything that you remember, stored in your long-term memory. And it's a huge amount of information that you probably remember. But it's not very good for actually manipulating ideas. You need to use your working memory for that. And if you want to solve complicated problems, you have to pull in entire chunks of information from your long-term memory into your working memory where you can manipulate them to solve the problems. If you don't have these chunks of information 
already in your long-term memory, you won't be able to work with them in your working memory. So when you're learning a new subject, you can see that getting these chunks of information into your long-term memory is really important. Studies have shown that getting things into long-term memory is best done using spaced repetition. That means you should practice using your chunks throughout the week rather than on just one day. The reason why this works is that between your study sessions, your brain will unconsciously continue reinforcing the neural patterns that you made with all your hard work. It's as if while you're taking a shower or taking a walk or even while you're sleeping, your brain is unconsciously working to strengthen and fit together the chunks that you worked so hard in your study session to make. If you space your study throughout the week, it's like you're getting something for nothing. All the times between your study sessions where you're not studying, it's like your brain is still actually studying and you really don't have to pay for it. If you did all your studying on just one day, even in that one day, you spent a lot of hours in that single day, the same amount of hours that you would have spent throughout the whole week. If you spent all those hours on just one day, you still would miss out on this unconscious learning that you would get between your study sessions had you just spaced them out during the week. I want to tell you about one more study technique that's particularly useful in studying science and other technical material. In various studies, this technique has been consistently shown to be more effective than highlighting, rereading the text, and making concept maps of the text. The technique is just recall. All that you do is you read a page out of the textbook, and then you close the textbook, and then you try to recall what the textbook said. Notice that you might end up rereading the textbook, but specifically when you reread it, it's for the purpose of being able to recall it. Studies have shown that students using this method of studying a textbook consistently outperform students using other methods when it came to in-depth knowledge of the subject. Interestingly, the studies seem to show that the students who used recall weren't just better at remembering what the textbook said, but they in fact had a deeper and more comprehensive knowledge of the subject of the text. The speculation is that since problem solving involves long-term memory and working memory and building chunks in your long-term memory, that when you first encounter the new material in the textbook, when you have to recall each individual facts, it's already putting them into your memory and they're giving you little hooks to manipulate these facts so you can later take them and build chunks out of them. So, to sum up, because your working memory can only manipulate about four things, you need to be able to pull up chunks of carefully organized interrelated pieces of information from your long-term memory into your working memory if you're going to be able to solve complicated problems. And because having these chunks of information in your long-term memory is so important for problem solving, two really good techniques for studying are spaced repetition and recall.